Okay, we're back live here at Strata Conference in Silicon Valley. We got uh, eight minutes to uh, feature a company <laughs> that we like here. It's uh, popped into the cube. Uh, Tim Morton from Acunu. Okay, so thanks for coming in. I know we don't have a lot of time. Shake your hand there. Good to be here, John. Um, we have another guest, but if the, if the guest is late, we'll stay on, but want to get you some uh, airtime. Uh, tell us about what you guys are doing. Um, real time is a real big focus right now. We love real time, it's hard. A lot of people don't know what that means, so talk about what your company is real quick, and let's talk about you know, the technical problem that you guys solve, and the business value that it creates. Okay, great, will do. So I think real time has been a big focus of the conference uh, here, and a lot of that is about making Hadoop faster. So we're not trying to make Hadoop faster, we always sit alongside That's Hadoop. That's Greenpoint, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's a number of vendors. <laughs> so um, we, we focus on operational analytics and operational intelligence. So when seconds matter or minutes matter, uh, where you're not trying to find a needle in a haystack, but where you're trying to, uh, trying to expose the latest results from a particular set of metrics and, and live dashboards. So what we've done is build real-time big data analytics as a framework on top of Apache Cassandra and we'll be announcing a release for that next, next week. Um, but that comes out of our experience of working with Cassandra customers uh, where we were you know, really seeing that they were struggling to deal with the data modeling and querying challenges and the, and the inflexibility that that can lead to. So we built an engine for helping people collect data from a range of different sources. We have Apache Flume integration, message queue integration. You can set up a queries which are basically like OLAP, real-time OLAP cubes. Yeah, Cassandra has found a nice little niche, that, well not niche, market with real-time, high transactional, mission critical value. Is that kind of what you're talking about? It, yeah, indeed. Um, maybe last year I would have described it as a niche, but this year yeah, I think you know, it's an every, addressable market. every Fortune 500 company we go to has active production Cassandra deployments, but many don't talk about them. Uh, and what, you know, some, sometimes that's to do with Cassandra's great scale out and geo, like, geo distribution capabilities, but often it's to do with real time analytics. What we're doing is we're making it much uh, easier and faster and accelerating that process of delivering real-time analytics on top of NoSQL. Yeah, and we've also seen Cassandra also penetrate some of the storage paradigms with SANS and using open source to actually mm -hmm. you know, move off proprietary drives into a much more cost-effective, horizontally scalable <laughs> uh, environment. Okay, quick, quick question for you uh, is, um, what is the focus right now in terms of the open source business model for you guys? I mean, is it software? Is it all free? You guys make money on training and support in the usual uh, ways, or you have a proprietary piece of code, or what's the business model for you guys? So, so the business model uh, is as follows. So we maintain a distribution of Cassandra. We, everything we do gets pushed back into open source Cassandra there. Um, analytics itself is a layer that sits on top of Cassandra. You can run it against vanilla Apache Cassandra. Um, analytics itself is closed source, but with open APIs. So let's talk about in-stream aggregation. So right now, um, the business models that everyone's going after, whether it's on the OLAP side or real-time side, is um, the user experience mm. is really critical. Yep. And Intel talked about that specifically. Um, having the user input data is not the preferred method. Um, getting data out of the experiences algorithmically or automated way is a big focus. Um, do you guys look at that at all? Is Cassandra a good fit for that? Or is there any specific use cases that you see in that area? So we, we, we work with customers who are doing social media analytics, who are collecting financial market data, who are collecting uh, telemetry data uh, in, in telcos and in, in manufacturing. And you know, that machine generated data as well as human generated data are the main sources of uh, main sources of, of use that Akunu Analytics gets put to. Um, what we found though is that tr traditional BI tools are not a good fit for, hel for helping people solve real-time monitoring problems, and neither are traditional monitoring tools. So we've ended up building a very configurable set of uh, dashboards as a web-based tool that allows you to, uh, that allows you to, uh, <laughs> I was looking for someone. Don't worry, yeah. I'm, about, you're, I'm not on camera. So, uh, so th those dashboards allow you to uh, to uh, get a lot of value out of the data set very quickly and be able to understand its structure and understand uh, how you can uh, how, how you can expose business so, insight from it. So, let me take take us through for the folks out there that are looking at the big data market who want to know in the Cassandra space that you guys are playing mm -hmm. in, what is the big enterprise value that you guys are seeing? And if you can rank that, is there a rank? If you can say, oh, one, two, three. Can you, is there a way to stack rank that in terms of the value propositions? Sure, so 
real-time insight, I think, is, is, is number one. So doing what you would traditionally have done in perhaps a transactional relational database or perhaps on a Hadoop system and actually moving that into a real-time framework where we're talking about data coming in and being available to make decisions on in seconds rather than in minutes or hours. Yeah, so, so let me ask you that question. So Cassandra has a lot of use cases, what I call in the new, new way. Mm -hmm. The old way is kind of data warehousing, mm -hmm. business intelligence, monolithic systems. The new way is a little bit spread out, resource-based, horizontally scalable. Um, and we saw some benchmarks from Greenplum saying that they're 100 times faster than Hadoop. A lot of questions on the benchmark. But that's kind of an old data warehousing model. Yeah. So it's like, okay, Hadoop gets a nice little messaging there. Um, it's a lower cost data warehouse, a pre-existing market. How do you guys compare and contrast to those worlds? I mean, obviously yep. you're in a different world, so, but that's moving over, so that, that data warehouse and business intelligence is now moving over into a new world. What's your point of view on that trend? Well, I think it's all very well making Hadoop faster, but really uh, that paradigm is about uh, accelerating the needle in a haystack exploratory and analytics process. You know, I'm going to ask you a question that I've not, allowed you to see before and I want you to find the answer to that and mine it from a very, very large set of data that's sitting there at rest. What we're working with is really allowing you to take these NoSQL technologies and uh, embed insights into what things matter to you. If you're doing clickstream analysis, you know you care about uh, users re being retained between levels two and level three, and that funnel is very important, and you need to be able to make decisions about how hard you make your social gaming in, so it's, in crit time. it's critical infrastructure in the sense that it's matched to business process. Absolutely, so it's that you, it's, it allows you to codify that business insight into the uh, analytics process. Yeah, and we're so seeing that too, by the way. We're seeing that the instrumentation and the data collection mm -hmm. is critical in this, you know, if there was a book being written, and I'm sure guys are writing <laughs> books now about process improvement around this new technology. Um, so we're on the same page there, but I want to ask you with respect to codifying process, uh, where are we in this? I mean, how early are we? How far along the track are we? I mean, you might argue we're early, early, or, you know. I think the early adopters have, um, I mean, I mean, I think the only can you peg a one to 10, 10 being a mature market? Are we minus one, are we two, <laughs> or are we one and a half? Three? So I think, with, I, I think in this space we're probably about three to four now. So the early adopters are having proven successes and are beginning to talk about those successes. I think the early mainstream are beginning to recognize what some of the early adopters have done and say, hey, yeah. I want a bit of this. So but, I was, I was know, talking to Billy Bosworth at Data, uh, data Stacks, and we're talking about you know Cassandra, and, and we did the Cassandra Summit uh, Cube there, and a great insight there. And Flash has been a real big enabler yep. for Cassandra, given some of the latency issues around storage, storage architectures. Um, but we, we you know we talked about Cassandra; is it gets kind of overshadowed by Hadoop from the hype side because Hadoop is mm. you know Hadoop, right? Um, so we kind of use the NASCAR analogy. It's like Cassandra's in the track and might slingshot around and take the, take the front position soon in terms of uh, recognition. Um, not there yet, uh, but it, it's different. And, and I want to ask you this question because there's a point there is we're hearing that, we heard a stat earlier, one in five Hadoop projects make it to production mm. of POCs. Um, Cassandra seems a little bit more mature in the, in the sense of in production. Do you see the same thing? And what's your comment on that, com on that quote? No, I, I agree, and if, if that was Billy's insight, I think that, that's very true. Uh, Cassandra, because traditionally it's been a, a relatively heavyweight um, process with, with perhaps a slightly <laughs> steeper barrier to entry and, and learning curve than uh, other systems, actually once people commit to it, they find that you know, you end up getting into production um, in, in a la much larger number of cases than with uh, perhaps an average Hadoop distribution. I, w I would, going back to the race analogy, I would say it's actually, you know, it's not a single race. We're looking to address different related, uh, related but different problems here. You okay, know, Tim, last question. We've got to get the hook because uh, our next guest is here. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, but final question is, what's your outlook for this marketplace, the collision of top-down, bottom-up, action between all the NoSQL and SQL environments, <laughs> or unstructured and un structured. What's your take on, on the forecast? I, I, th I think the collision's uh, inevitable. We, we, we've seen a bit of it today at the conference and with the Greenplum announcement. You know, enterprise data warehousing, uh, unstructured data warehousing in the shape of Hadoop, and NoSQL databases are going to um, collide and merge together, but I don't know where that leaves customers in terms of uh, their ability to understand what's happening in the marketplace. What, it's, a, it's a tricky one. What is your take on the Greenplum announcement? I mean, just your, what's your point of view on it? What, 
Good, bad, medium? I think, I think it's great. Um, the the I, I think they have a lot of uh, great complementary technologies and clearly a lot of talent inside the Green Plum organization to be able to they deliver. They have money behind with EMC. They have a lot of money behind them. Uh, I think they certainly have the ability to execute and deliver on, on that vision. I don't know to what extent the world needs yet another Hadoop distribution, but I think hopefully the yeah. potential competitive companies there will find a way to work together for the good of the user base. Tim Morton, AccuNew, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest, uh, Roger from O'Reilly. We're going to talk about applied big data on our next segment live here inside theCUBE at Strata, siliconangle.com's exclusive coverage of O'Reilly's Strata Conference in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>